Hello! Thanks for watching, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. Now as usual, a few things before we get started. Number one, if you're watching this video because you are struggling in a class right now, I want you to stay positive and keep your head up. If you're watching this, it means you've accomplished quite a bit already. You're very smart and talented, but you may have just hit a temporary rough patch. Now I know with the right amount of hard work, practice, and patience, you can work through it. I have faith in you. Many other people around you have faith in you. So, so should you. Number two, please feel free to follow me here on YouTube, on Twitter, on Google+, or on LinkedIn. That way, when I upload a new video, you know about it. And it's always nice to connect with my viewers online. I feel that life is much too short and the world is much too large for us to miss the chance to connect when we can. Number three, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with classmates or colleagues or put it on a playlist. That does encourage me to keep making them for you. On the flip side, if you think there's something I can do better, please leave a constructive comment below the video and I will take those ideas into account when I make new ones. And finally, just keep in mind that these videos are meant for individuals who are relatively new to stats. So I'm just going over basic concepts and I will be doing so in a slow, deliberate manner. Not only do I want you to know what is going on, but also why and how to apply it. So all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in our series about analyzing variance. In our last video, we discussed how to conduct hypothesis tests for the equality of two population variances using the F ratio and F distribution. This video is an extension of that topic. In this lesson, we will work two brief example problems to reinforce our understanding of the comparison of two population variances. I will assume that you've watched the previous video or have prior knowledge and are only watching this for extra practice. So let's go ahead and get to work. So our first example is called heavy metal. So the heavy metal corporation produces aluminum or aluminum, depending on where you are, sheets which are specified to be exactly 11 millimeters thick. Now due to several factors, there is natural variability in the thickness of the finished product. Two machines are used to produce the metal sheets. So we're going to test whether or not the variance of machine one is the same as the variance of machine two. So to do this, a sample of metal sheets is selected from each machine for testing. And the results are as follows. So for machine one, we had a sample size of 10 sheets. The sample mean was 11.02 millimeters. The sample variance as squared was 0.0284 and the sample center deviation was 0.1687 millimeters. Now for machine two, with a sample size of 12 sheets, our sample mean was 10.9875 millimeters, our sample variance was 0.0051, and our sample center deviation was 0.0711 millimeters. And of course, we are interested in the two sample variances. So here is our F ratio. So on top we have the first sample variance and on the bottom we have the second sample variance and they do go in a specific order which we'll talk about here in a second. But remember that the numerator and denominator both have N minus one degrees of freedom. So whichever sample goes on top or bottom, we have to have that many minus one degrees of freedom for that numerator or the denominator. So here is our data from before. And the first thing we do is find the larger of the two sample variances. So in this case, it's the sample variance from our first sample. So 0 0.0284 is larger than 0 0.0051. And then that will be our numerator in the F ratio. Then we find the degrees of freedom based on sample size. So since that variance will be in our numerator, our sample size is 10, therefore the degrees of freedom in the numerator is 10 minus one or nine. Therefore in the denominator, that's gonna be our second sample. 
So that sample size was 12. 12 minus 1 equals 11. So our numerator degrees of freedom is 9, and our denominator degrees of freedom is 11. And that all started because we placed the larger variance in the numerator. So here is our F distribution. We're going to use an alpha of 0 0.05. Remember our degrees of freedom 1 is 9, that's the numerator, and degrees of freedom 2 is 11, that's the denominator. So here is that distribution. Now we have the 95% in the lower tail and the 5% in the upper tail, because remember these are always upper tailed tests. Now we need to find the critical value that separates the rejection region from the non-rejection region here in the blue. Now I'm just going to put the screenshot from Excel 2010 so you know how to find it. You use the f.inv.rt, so the f inverse right tailed. So in the probability box we put 0 .05, that's our alpha. Degrees of freedom 1 is the numerator degrees of freedom, that's 9. And degrees of freedom 2, that is our denominator degrees of freedom, that's 11. So you will see we have a result of 2.89622, etc. So that is our critical value that separates the non-rejection region here in the blue and the rejection region in the tail. So now we need to find our F ratio statistic. So here's our formula. And remember our variances were 0 0.0284 and 0 0.0051. So all we do is divide them. And we end up with an F statistic of 5.569. Now, where does that fall in our distribution? What well, actually is so large, it falls off the distribution we have to work with here. So what do we conclude? Well, we will reject the null hypothesis. So based on these samples, these variances are not equal. Our F statistic falls in the rejection region. So we can say that based on these samples, the variances are not equal. So example two, gas problems. So a consumer rights group launched an investigation based on accusations of price gouging at fuel stations in a certain city. To test this possibility, the group compared the variances between the suspected city and a similar city where no complaints have been made. So we're gonna compare the variance of the city that is suspected of price gouging against a similar city that is not. So to do this, a sample of fuel prices is selected from each city. So for sample one, we have a sample size of 10. The average price of fuel, and I will assume this is here in the US, is around $3.42. Our sample variance was 0 0.0096, and our sample standard deviation was 0 0.0980. For our second sample, it was also 10. Here at the mean was $3.45, the sample variance was 0 0.0118, and the sample standard deviation was 0 0.1088 dollars, or about 10 or 11 cents. But of course, we're interested here in the sample variances. So same thing here. Here's our F ratio. We have n minus one degrees of freedom on the numerator, n minus one degrees of freedom in the denominator. So the first thing we do is find the larger of the two sample variances. So in this case, it is the second one. So 0 0.0118. That will be the numerator in our F ratio. Then we find the degrees of freedom based on sample size. Now this is easy because they are both 10. So the degrees of freedom on top and bottom are both nine. So we needed F distribution with an alpha of 0 0.05, degrees of freedom one of nine, and degrees of freedom two of nine. And here is that distribution. So 95%, that's our non-rejection region, and the 5% is our rejection region. So we go into Excel again, and we use the f.inv.rt, the F inverse right tailed, and we put 0 0.05 for probability, nine for degrees of freedom one, and nine for degrees of freedom two, and that gives us an F critical of 3.18. We'll round up to 3.18. So that will be the threshold as to whether or not we put the F statistic in the rejection region or non-rejection region. So let's go ahead and do that right now. 
So remember, we put the larger variance on top, so that's 0 0.0118, and then the smaller one in the denominator. So if we go ahead and find that, and we end up with an F statistic of 1.229. So that falls way down here in our non-rejection region. So what do we conclude? So in this case, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. So based on these samples, the variances are not statistically different. Okay, a recap and then we're done. So remember the F ratio is based on two sample variances. The larger variance is placed in the numerator, the smaller in the denominator. The critical F value is found using the F table or digitally. I use either Excel or a phone app on my Android phone with a chosen alpha level, numerator degrees of freedom of N minus one, and a denominator degrees of freedom of N minus one. And then the test statistic is the ratio of those two sample variances. If the test statistic is larger than the critical F value, then we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that wraps up our two practice problems on testing as to whether or not two population variances are equal. Again, using the F ratio and the F distribution. It's actually a fairly straightforward, simple test, but it does prepare us for what's coming next, and that is ANOVA, the analysis of variance. So a few reminders and then we're done. If you're watching this because you are struggling in a class, stay positive and keep your head up. If you're watching this, it means you're smart, talented, and amazing. Never let anyone else tell you differently, including yourself. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to follow me here on YouTube, on Twitter, on Google Plus, or on LinkedIn. It's always nice hearing from you. And finally, just keep in mind that the fact that you're on here trying to learn, trying to improve yourself as a student or a business person, that is what really matters. I firmly believe if you have the right learning process in place, the results will take care of themselves. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again next time.